Okay, we're looking at Fernando Soros, very famous, uh, I think it's Opus, well, it's the ones that he wrote when he was in England. This is number 22 that Segovia in his edition of the Etudes called number five. Uh, in B minor. Again, for bars, remember, you are not clamping the neck, but you're using the weight of your arm to just hang from the guitar. Sorry about that, I hang a little bit too hard there. Hang from the guitar, right? Now, if you point at the music real quick, let's point a couple of things. Point the camera at the music, please. So, you notice that in the score, you have this note hollowed out as a half note, right? Then it's continued over here. Then this is hollowed as a half note, following the same pattern, right? So you have strong weight, weak. Strong weight, weak, right? And then at the same time, you have this kind of like interruption of the F sharp, right? Creating a little bit of a pedal every so often over here turning into a G. So that is a little bit of an interjection that this other voice is putting in coming out of the bass, but it is not to interrupt that other top voice. So if we look at how we process this, going back to the guitar, so just playing the top voice, you have two, three, And now if we add that bass line, it's almost like saying, hi, I want your attention, please, but you're not going to let it be as loud or as present, let's just say, as the top voice. If we add all the other elements, those need to be even quieter, right? So here's where we really get to work on the art of touch, uh, the idea of what weight you're going to put onto the strings of the guitar. by an, a B, then you have to let a bar, right? You have to be very quick with your index finger. Right? So how to get yourself to play it like that? It's a beautiful piece of music. And if you put your weights right on the, what, what fingers uh, need more weight and what fingers need less weight, which is more important, right? It's not about bringing out what melody is actually about taking other melodies and taking them further into the background. So how do you do this? You have to practice very slowly, bearing in mind what is more present and bearing in mind, more importantly, what is to be less present. Less. And it's actually a little bit helpful right now for me that my third string is a little bit out of tune. Now, why did I say that before? If you actually lower this or raise it, So let's play the game of making that string be the least audible because it's out of tune. It sounds obnoxious, right? Now we will have to detune the second string, right? But in an ideal world, you wouldn't have to detune your guitar. You would, you would be able to do it by just commanding your fingers to do this. Easier said than done. I know this is difficult, right? So it requires very slow and methodical, conscious practice. You need to be there in as to what you're doing. Now, let me get through this to give you the first half of the piece.
So far exactly, right? A little change in harmony, you got a G major chord, right? Right, so here you have an intrusion on the third beat with that bass. And this time I chose to make that G more present. I could actually just say, I think having that G as a passing tone connects things a little bit better. Then the second half starts the same way, almost. It's a C sharp there, but that sounds wrong. I think that's a B. Right, so it's mis not it's, it's, it's a mistake in the original score. So if you could point at the at the score. It's even actually crossed out in here. Right, so that's a B bass, so it's the fifth string second fret. Just more, uh, maybe a gadget, if you may. It's, it's uh, in, in terms of interpretation. You really had this change of mood, a little bit of change with the B7, then it's what we call a circle of fifths, right? Where you have this B7 is the dominant of E minor, and then from B7 you move on to A7 which is the dominant of D major. A little bit of a hint of E minor, A minor, C major. That C natural is really, really naughty, kind of like in a Neapolitan way. And then you have... That's the dominant of B minor, which is the key of the piece, which means we're going to come back. there almost to the end of the piece uh, you're in the next to the last line so if you start on that line big cadence so you start on it gives you an idea of B of D major but then you introduce that B so you're thinking okay it's B minor then you have to shift to make a bar on the fourth fret you only need to get to your fifth string for that C sharp right so you don't need the full C7, C sharp 7. Right? And then you have kind of like a diminished chord, dominant. And then slide over. Like in E minor, right? So it's just beautiful. So it's a two diminished. C sharp, sorry. Oh, oh, B, B. Right. 
So let's revisit all of that. So we start on the second line. Connecting, right, here's your B minor, D major moment. Now, it's marked as a G there. Which is kind of beautiful, but it's not the way that I've heard most people play it. Um, but since this is a very old edition, let's just humor it and you have... Oh, sorry. Get off your bar, move the index forward, or maybe start without a bar. A little bit of an agogic moment, uh, you're retardando, and then... Not quite a leading tone, but 